What's going on guys, welcome back to Gabriel Gaprod. And let's see another cool thing that VFX Graph can do. This time we are going to see the awesome burning paper effect. It was the most voted by my patrons and I think it turned out pretty cool. And it obviously doesn't need to be a book, right? With lightning and all that. I just added that because I think it looks cool and it's an extra touch for my patrons to dig. Well, it can be used as a pile of paper, among other things I'm sure. In case you are interested in unloading this project, you can get it on my Patreon page, I left a link in the description. So let's jump right into it and let's see how we can burn paper in Unity. So as a starting point, I'm gonna show you how to do the burning pile of paper and then we will have a quick overview of the book effect. So for the burning pile of paper, well, first, you are going to need a page of a book or entire book. I found this one in Blender Swap, link in description, and it looks great. So I jumped to Blender and I ripped both pages as separated objects. They are two different objects and exported them as FBX. And I also exported the book texture that came with this blend file. And then I imported to Unity to create this pile of paper, right? By the way, I'm using Unity 2020 with the Universal Render Pipeline. And I have installed VFX Graph as well as Shader Graph in the Package Manager. With that being done, now we can go ahead and with right click, go to Create and click on Visual Effect Graph right here. Rename it and I'm going to parent this to my pile of paper. Next, we can click on the Edit button to open VFX Graph and I'm going to duck it around here and make some room as well. Alright, so first things first, once you got the pages or the piece of paper, down here we don't want to output a quad, so we can delete this and then create an output particle mesh node. Right, as you can see we have the capsule assigned and this is where you can assign your piece of paper. I'm going to select one of these pages and it's really tiny, in my case. We can control the size with a set size of around 10. And since I exported the book texture from Blender, I'm going to assign it as a main texture as well. Just like this, looking really nice. Now as you can see we need to rotate this, right? And we can do it with a set angle in the initialize particle. This node allows us to rotate the particle. In my case it's going to be 90 in the X and since it seems flipped, 180 in the Y. Just like this. And I'm going to reset the position of my VFX graph so it fits perfectly with the pile of paper, as you can see. If I turn off the set velocity, it doesn't move and we can have a better perception of where it is. I'm also going to decrease the rate to around 8. And we actually need the set velocity module. There's many ways to do this, but this component now allows us to control the direction of the paper, basically. As you can see, I'm gonna tilt it a little bit to the left, which is in the X. You will need to look to the axis of the world and see towards which direction you want this to go. Once you got the values right, you can decrease a little bit the lifetime or increase it if you want the paper to live longer. That's truly up to you. Now, if we want to add some rotation to this paper, we need the update particle, which happens continuously. And we are going to use an add angular velocity that, for example, if we start rotating in the X axis, this will happen. And then if we insert something in the Y axis, we create a different motion. Okay, so we got the paper kind of flying. Now let's do the burning effect part. And we need a shader for that. And it's a special shader to work exclusively with visual effect graph. So with right click we are going to shader and create a VFX shader graph. Rename it. And then open it up. And the first thing we need to do is turn on alpha mask. Delete option only works in the high definition render pipeline, which means that this shader will not be influenced by light. But I've read somewhere that delete option will be available in the universal render pipeline, which is good. Now the two properties that we need are a color. This color will influence only the color of the paper, 
you can set it to HDR and white and alpha maxim. And then we will need a texture 2D, which will be, in this case, the book texture. Let's drag both properties around here. I'm going to sample the main texture and multiply with the color. And then connect it to the color input of the Visual Effect Master. And if we save this and go back to our VFX graph, the great thing now is that we can assign that shader right here where it says Shader Graph in the Output Particle Mesh. And make sure the mesh and the texture are still assigned, like this. But as you can see, our properties have a weird name. And we can change that name in the reference of the properties, right here. I'm gonna delete this and leave the underscore. And also rename the reference of the main texture. Now for the burning part, we are going to need a noise texture. And fortunately, Shader Graph has some personally generated noises, like a simple noise, where we can control the scale as we wish. And for example, if we multiply the simple noise with the outcome of this multiply, and then replace the connection to the color, we then only need to connect the simple noise to the alpha, and if we save it, our paper disappears. And that is correct, because our alpha threshold is set to 1. If we decrease it to a small value, we can see our pages flying. And yes, they are transparent, but we will fix that in a moment. Let's create a vector 1. To control the alpha threshold, we can name it alpha clip, which is going to be a slider between 0 and 1, with a default value of 0 0.1, and we can connect it right here. Right, so... Oh, and don't forget to change the reference to match the name of this property, right? So if we save this and go back to VFX Graph, this is where we control if it is transparent or opaque. And we want to switch the blend mode to opaque. And as you can see, if we look closely, we actually have a very small hole in our paper. Which is great, because now if we go back to our shader, we want to have control over the dissolve amount, so we can create a vector 1, name it dissolve amount, which is also going to be a slider between 0 and 1, with a default value of 0 0.5 for now. And the way we use this dissolve amount vector 1 is by adding it to the simple noise. As you can see, if I increase the dissolve amount to 1, it becomes white, and if I set it to 0, it should be black. So we are in fact going to remap this vector 1. The first option is the input, which is the dissolve amount, that goes from 0 to 1. And we are going to say that 0 is going to be in fact 0 0.5 and 1 is going to be 1.3. And if we connect this to the add, nothing special happens. But if we then remap this, so the 0 is minus 4 and 1 is 4, we should get the noise with black and white areas. It isn't happening because we need to invert this with a 1 minus note. And voila! Now 1 is black, which is completely dissolved, and 0 is white, which is no dissolve at all. Right, so we got the dissolve part working. Now, to make this look like it's burning, we need a few more things. The first one is we need to clamp these values between 0 and 1, so we don't have strange artifacts. Then we can replace the connection to this multiply right here. And then there is a special node, the step that will allow us to control the dissolve width. But first we need to subtract it like this. And now if we play with this value, we should get an highlighted outline of the burning part. And that is not happening because we need to invert this once again, because we want to subtract the excess. And now this value and the step will control the dissolve width which is that line over there that looks like it's burning. So let's create a vector one, name it dissolve white, with a default value of 0 0.2 and not 1, like I did, and connect it to the step. Oh, and also rename the reference of these vectors, so we know what they are in the VFX graph. Now for the burning part, we need the color, right? So let's create a new color, call it dissolve color, also rename the reference, change it to HDR, and you can pick whatever color you want. With this dissolve color, now we can multiply it with the subtract. 
I'm gonna pick an orange color and adjust the white as well. As you can see, we have that nice outline, which is the burning effect. We only need now to add this to the main texture from here. But as you can see, we have these strange colors, these strange artifacts. And they are only happening because we need once again to clamp the values that comes out of this multiplier down here. But once we do that, everything becomes all right. And then we can replace the connection to the color. And let's also replace the connection to the alpha with this clamp output. Okay, now we can save it. And as you can see, it has already taken effect in our pages. So let's go to VFX graph and play with these properties. And the first thing we can do is set the alpha clip to 0 0.001, a very small value, so we can get these dark edges that looks really nice. Now, we want to control the dissolve amount over time. We want the pages to be totally dissolved when their lifetime ends. So the way we can achieve that is exactly with the lifetime, with age over lifetime, of each particle. As soon as we plug these to the dissolve amount, this will automatically animate the burning effect of these papers. If you want to offset the burning effect, you can add a tiny value. And it will start burning earlier or later. You can control that right here. Great, so it's looking nice. The only thing now we need is a little bit more variety, a little bit more randomness. That's very simple to achieve because we have this great communication between VFX graph and shader graph. For example, now we can create a property for dissolve scale right here, connected to the simple noise. Don't forget to rename the reference, by the way. And if we save it and go back to our VFX graph, we can now insert a random number to the scale. Something between 30 and 60 or 40 and 60. And each page will have a different dissolve scale. You can even go further with the same idea and use a random number for the dissolve white, for example. Something between 0 0.2 and 0 0.7. Each page will have a different burning white. And there's many more things that you can do. But for the sake of this story, we are going to move on. For example, we need to change the color, make it brighter with the intensity. Mine is really bright because I have a global volume with bloom and stuff like that. You can create one with right click right here and that's it. So now that we have the burning paper effect going on and it looks pretty nice, we can add a few more things like some particles, for example. I'm going to group this and then create a simple particle system. First thing is changing the main texture to the default particle that comes with Unity, which is fine. And change the blend mode to additive, so it becomes brighter. And let's also change the set size of a lifetime. We want this to go from big to small with this curve. And we also want a set size to control the size of these particles, where we want to switch this to multiply instead of for overwrite. And 0 0.1 seems fine for now. What we can then do is stretch the particles so they look like embers flying with a set scale and these values. They are not facing the direction in which they are going because the orient module needs to be in a long velocity, just like this. And now each particle follows their velocity vector direction. For the color, I already have some gradients, but they are super simple to create. For example, I'm going to increase the intensity of these keys right here. Okay, that looks nice. They got a nice bright touch. And if we want to control the area where the particles spawn, we can do it up here in the initialized particle with the position AA box. It's basically a box. If you don't see the box, then press target game object and then select the VFX graph and you can press attach. And now if you select the box module, you will see the box gizmos. And they are super useful because it allows you to directly change the shape of the box in the scene. But you can still resize it inside the VFX graph. Right, I'm gonna place it right here, it looks nice. I'm gonna adjust the velocity so it follows along with the pages. And that's it. Now, if you wanna add smoke, 
Please have a look at this tutorial, there is even a free smoke texture link. I will show you how to set up the smoke in VFX graph, you only need then to align it with the papers. For the book, well I created some bones, made the falling and opening animation, added a VFX graph similar to the one we created to each page, and then made this lightning flip book to complement the opening impact. Also added some smoke and that's it. I think it came out great, really nice. If you want to have a closer look to this, this is all available on my Patreon page. Your support keeps the channel running and you get a bunch of VFX and shader assets that you can use in your projects and in your games. Talking about Patreon, I want to thank every patron for the amazing support and as usual, a special shout out to the top tier patrons which are Angel R Dev, Goblin Plague, Hero Syndrome The Game, Himeraya SPC, JD Sale, Josh McCormick, Ram and Yola, Ken Lee, Kojo Puni, Lu Chang Chen, Marco Rossi, Peer, Regan Nade, Tamari S, TK, Victor Nathan, Zor, and Ilya Zimov. So that's it guys, I hope you have all enjoyed this video and I really hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.